New polls have been released days before Jamaicans vote in general elections on Thursday, February 25. The RGR News commissioned Don Anderson poll have given a slight edge to the PNP over the opposition Jamaica Labour Party. The Don Anderson poll says the People's National Party has fallen one percentage point, which reflects a 3% lead over the Jamaica Labour Party. However, the Jamaica Labour Party has jumped five points. These are in comparison to the results of the polls in January. The party standing show the PNP at 30.8%, up from 27% in the January polls. But the Jamaica Labour Party is now at 28%, up from 23% in January. Mr. Anderson says of the five polls he has conducted since 2015. The last two done since the start of the year are the only surveys of the Jamaican electorate that show the ruling PNP with an edge over the opposition Jamaica Labour Party. Meanwhile, the Gleaner Commission under Bill Johnson poll has given the Jamaica Labour Party the lead in the marginal seats of St. Andrew East Rural and St. Elizabeth Southwest, both of which have PNP incumbents. In the St. Andrew East Rural constituency, Juliet Holness of the JLP currently commands a 5 percentage point lead over her challenger Imani Duncan Price of the PNP. And in the constituency of St. Elizabeth Southwest, the JLP's Floyd Green has the advantage over the MP's city, PNP's sitting MP Hugh Buchanan, who won the seat over the JLP's Dr. Christopher Tufton in 2011 by a mere 13 votes. In the meantime, the Bill Johnson poll says 53% of its respondents believe the country is heading in the wrong direction, with unemployment being the issue requiring urgent attention. As for the preferred leader, 49% of respondents are in favor of leader of the opposition JLP Andrew Holness as the next Prime Minister, compared to 42% who are in favor of Prime Minister and a PNP leader, Portia Simpson-Miller. And the CNews team posed the question to two political analysts about whether they have predicted a clear winner at this stage. Richard Dickey Crawford says he's predicting a trend which won't necessarily prove the victor. I think I've still identified a winner. It's, it's, um, it's going to be a, a good contest. I have, so to speak, I'll tell you how I've given all the, mar I've taken away all the marginal seats from the People's National Party and presume that almost all of them, that they, that they lose them and they still come out a couple of seats ahead. Meanwhile, Kevin O'Brien Chang says it's too close to call. The PNP started ahead, and, but the JLP has been closing rapidly. The, the docking of the debates has been a big issue. The bonus is hosted a big issue in terms of how people feel he has treated unfairly. Um, and he proved that he had was legitimate. But the 1.5 tax plan, that could well decide the election. If enough people buy into that plan, the JLP could win, well win. It's going to be very close, and I think right now both parties are pretty close together. And it's going to be decided in the last two days, and people always say it's decided on the day, and it could be well who has the better ground game. But the 1.5 plan, I think, is the factor that would could If enough people believe it, the JLP might win. If, if people don't believe it, the PNP might win. Still on the Jamaican political scene, nothing new and an impractical manifesto. That's the view of the People's National Party on the presentation made by the Jamaica Labour Party during its mass rally on Sunday evening. Speaking with the CNews team on Tuesday, PNP campaign spokesperson Delano Franklin says the JLP's arguments lack substance. The presentations were no different from those that they have been making over the last few weeks. I find them to lack substance. I find them to lack practicality. I find them not to be implementable. I'm speaking specifically to the proposals which they have made about giving one tax break to persons who are earning less than 1.5 million annually. Also, the proposal to double the minimum wage. If you were to put those two proposals together, you're talking about 100 billion Jamaican dollars. They are unable, they have not yet been able to say where that amount of money will be coming from in a current IMF agreed economic program of reform to which, to which they claim they are committed. Mr. Franklin adds that the proposal to address the shortfall using the gas tax will affect another area of the government's mandate. The gas tax of which they speak, that was created for two specific reasons. One, to cushion Jamaica against possible increase in the cost of oil. 
So if that gas tax is going to be diverted, the question is going to be if there is going to if there is an increase in the cost of oil, which there will be over a period of time, where is the con going to find money from to be able to pay for the increased cost? Secondly, that gas tax of which we speak was being used to implement alternate source of energy, particularly in the area of solar energy. Are we saying that we're going to slow down that program? Are we saying that we're going to scrap that program? And what does that mean for the country developing alternative energy sources outside of the importation of oil? He notes that the majority of the JLP's 10-point plan is already being done by the current government. Mr. Franklin rubbished the proposal to establish a new minister to address economic growth. There is no need to create any ministry, single ministry, to address economic growth. Economic growth has to be driven by way of all ministries working in the context of a program developed by the government of Jamaica. And as the political temperature intensifies with two days to go before the general election in Jamaica, there is news of another lawsuit being filed. The wife of the leader of opposition leader, Andrew Holness, Mrs. Juliet Holness, along with her brother, Stephen Landell, have filed a lawsuit against finance minister and PNP campaign director, Dr. Peter Phillips. Mrs. Holness and her brother have accused Dr. Phillips of making false, malicious and defamatory statements against them twice during the month of February. Four other defendants have been named in the lawsuit. They include PNP executive Omar Newell, who is also a general secretary of the Patriots and an operator of a Twitter account, Dorothy Buchanan, mother of PNP candidate for Southwest St. Elizabeth Hugh Buchanan and an operator of a Facebook account. Kadia Francis, special assistant to state minister in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Trade, Arnaldo Brown and Karen Wood Saunders, an operator of a Facebook account, a PNP sympathizer and a franchise protection officer at the Jamaica Urban Transit Company. Mrs. Holness and Mr. Landell are being represented by attorney at law Chukwumika Cameron. The claimants are seeking several declarations. According to Mrs. Holness, based on Dr. Phillips's untrue statements, he has created conditions that aren't suitable for free and fair elections. The legal wrangling stems from comments allegedly made by Dr. Phillips at a PNP press conference on February 12th and at a mass rally in Manchester on February 14. Mrs. Holness has described as defamatory utterances by Dr. Phillips regarding the Beverly Hills house being built by herself and her husband in St. Andrew. At that PNP press briefing, Dr. Phillips reportedly questioned the opposition leader's financial integrity and the source of funds being used to construct his home. Mrs. Holness contends that Dr. Phillips intended that the alleged defamatory words would be published by the media. She has also alleged that Dr. Phillips made the comments to destroy her political campaign and ultimately her defeat at the February 25 polls in the constituency of East Rural St. Andrew, where she is facing the PNP's Imani Duncan Price. In the meantime, Mrs. Holness's sibling, Stephen Landell, is also suing for remarks from PNP associates on social media who labeled him a convicted Jamaican drug dealer. Persons on Facebook have allegedly identified Jamaican drug dealer Andrew Wayne Landell, who is serving 15 years in the United States as Mrs. Holness's brother. Mrs. Holness has made it clear that her brother Stephen Landell is a critical care nurse who resides in New York. The claimants are seeking an injunction to bar Dr. Phillips and other defendants from continuing the alleged defamatory statements. They are also seeking damages for slander and libel.